Oh yeah, baby. Okay, the time's finally come. We are getting back to work on Wayland. And it's a very special day because I get to reveal to you guys some details about the new engine setup. That's right. We're changing things up a little bit here. Why? Well, because we've basically got ADHD and uh, yeah, that's all. Anyway, let's get to it. So if you've watched this channel, you've probably seen this thing floating around the background of a lot of shots, a lot of different episodes. And uh, there have been a lot of people that have suggested that this go into the Tahoe. Sorry, burst your bubble, but it's not. One, it's very big. I mean, it'd fit in there, but it'd be kind of a pain in the ass. And two, we need something that's gonna make a lot more power. So with that said, we're heading over to Georgetown, Texas to stop by Texas Speed to see what we got in store for old Wayland. So the first order of business upon arriving at Texas Speed was obviously to check the stock of my BFD cams and of course, oh yeah, we got some. After that, we wanted to go over and check out the status of my Godzilla and uh, as it turns out, it's pretty messed up. Apparently oil floating around the system doesn't really do so hot for the cam bearings, those are pretty galled up and the main bearings, well, smoked as well. Looks like the boys found some more chunks of thrust bearing floating around inside the block, and it looked like there was some uneven wear on the pistons due to the crank walking back and forth. So the general takeaway here is that the uh, motor definitely needs a full rebuild and probably a little bit more R&D before we're going to throw a lot of power at it. So in the meantime, we're going to build something that's very tried, true, trusty, and extra strong. By the way, if you are curious about why there's so much voiceover in this episode, it's because, well, I forgot to turn on the microphone while filming at Texas Speed. So I hope you enjoy the radio voice. Let's get back to it. Now the foundation of this build is going to be this Dart SHP LS Next Pro block with a 4.125 inch bore and a 4 inch stroke. Now, the difference between the Pro block and the standard LS Next block is all in the casting. The Pro is cast from 220 BHN cast iron, which basically increases the block's tensile strength from 30,000 to 38,000 PSI. It also has upgraded ARP main studs. Now, both variants come with the standard priority main oiling system that you find on all dart blocks and of course those big old steel four bolt main caps with displayed outer bolts on the middle main bearing caps making this thing way stronger to keep that big old crank spin and staying in one place for cramming boost on its throat and the cool thing about these shp versions of these blocks is that they're skirted so you can actually run a factory oil pan on them uh, you no longer have to get like the bill of rails or some like wild custom pan made for this the best part is that they're clearance for center counterweighted crankshafts. Now, let me show you the difference between a dart block and an LSX block with one of these. So on an LSX or a standard GM block, you can't run a center counterweighted crank without having to modify the crankshaft, otherwise those counterweights will be smacking the webbing in the inside. So on the dart block, all the machining is already done from the factory, so you don't have to do any of that, and so you can run that big old center-weighted crankshaft in that without worrying about smacking it around on things. Which is exactly what we're doing because we're running this really badass dart eight counterweight, four inch stroke billet crank. All right, so I busted out a few crankshafts so we can compare and contrast. On the left, we've got the Apex from Compstar. In the middle, we've got the Texas Speed counterweighted. And then on the right, we got the big old Dart. Now, you can actually see the difference between these, where the Texas Speed one, it does not have the big old center weights. Uh, on the Compstar here, you can see how the center weights are beveled like that. And then on the Dart, nice and thick. No actual cutting on there, and that's because of that webbing. It don't have to clearance for that. Now, if you're trying to run this Dart, in a LSX block, you would 100% have to cut that thing down. Now, the pistons and rods we're going to go over in a completely separate episode, so let's get into the heads. Now, on this setup, we're going to be running a set of PRC-285CC LS7 style heads with titanium intake valves and Inconel exhaust valves. 
Now these heads come with a 12 degree valve angle with an intake valve that's 2.245 inches and an exhaust valve that is 1.610 with a 70cc chamber size. Now these are six bolt heads with a nice thick head deck so uh, clamping power is going to be excellent especially because again we're cramming a lot of boost into it. Obviously running the LS7 head because we are going to be running 427 cubic inches and up and also we need the flow because we're going to be seeing a lot of RPM out of this engine. I'm hoping to be around the 8,000 mark when we're all said and done. Now here's something that's pretty cool. Look, let's say you want to get a short block that's very similar to this. Texas Speed is actually offering their Reaper kits. So it's a complete short block ready to go. It's 434 cubic inches. It's with a Dart Iron LS next block. Cali's Comstar 8 counterweight crank. You get the TSP Wiseco forged pistons with upgraded wrist pins. Cali's Comstar Extreme Forge 4340 steel HI beam connecting rods and uh, an ARP main stud kit. Basically the thing's 1600 horsepower capable and you can just call them up, get it, they got them on the shelves and ready to go. So while some things will be changing, some things will be staying the same. Like this Gearstar Pro 4L85E level four, four by four transmission and of course the transfer case. So uh, the only thing we need to change on this to make it fit our new dart block is this bell housing. So luckily we've got a new one from Reed and uh, we can change that out right now because you know what? I'm sick of not working on cars. Let's get to it. So the first order of business, we gotta get the torque converter out and this thing is gonna be filled with fluid. So hopefully I don't make a gigantic mess, but inevitably I'm going to, so whatever. <sighs> Gearstar is nice enough to send these with the converter on and full because you should not install a torque converter dry. God damn, these things are heavy. It's enough to get me to the boiling point. And now, next, all we need to do is pull these bolts off and we can just swap that thing out. They're just 916 bolt. Boom, boom. We'll get the old impact in there. Give them a little zippity doo dah and we're good to go. Booyah. We replace it with the Chevy. Check this out. Let me take a look at the difference between the Ford modular bell housing, which also works for the Godzilla, and the Chevy bell housing. See that little top pain in the ass bolt? Always uh, hard to get to, that one there. Obviously Ford likes to, you know, encase the starter. Chevrolet leaves it open. Not too big. Yeah, not too big of a difference, but if you could count, you notice that there are more bolts on the Chevy pattern and they're also in different places. Not to mention, there's a lip on it too. Now we're about to see Zach having a realization that I probably should have done some more research. Let's see if this lines up or if this was some custom deal. Oh my God, it was, wasn't it? Dear God. Ah, it was. Okay. I thought that would be the case. This billet piece was machined to accept that Ford bell housing. So now, hopefully, this case wasn't cut down so much because the distance for the converter to get in and out is really important. And if that's not right, we're screwed. So what I neglected to explain while at the shop in my very somber state of realization was that Gearstar, in order to make that Reed SFI rated bell housing fit to a stock 4L80 case, had to do a lot of machine work to the case itself. It has to be cut down, the original bell housing has to be cut off, then they have to actually machine it back, and then uh, this adapter and pump kit can be bolted into it. Basically, the adapter bolts straight into the pump, and then you, know, you bolt the Reed bell housing onto that adapter. Typically, these Reed bell housings are made for, let's say, the Reed Super 80 case, which is a fully aftermarket case that they make. So that's where we're at right now. Ah, okay, here's what's happening. Up Shits Creek for tonight. So we need to get uh, an adapter for this. We're gonna look online right now, see if what we can find. Hopefully there's something we can just buy because that would be wonderful. And uh, yeah. Hopefully it works. Otherwise, well, we gotta figure out a new transmission scenario. 
and I don't want to do that. It looks like I found where this ring is from and it's uh, Extreme Automatics and uh, they make, there's a couple people that seem to make these ring and pump kits, but this looks exactly like what we've got here. Uh, problem is they don't make one of these rings, it looks like, for small block Chevy. Because why would you? You just get a full Reed Super 80. Uh, so what we're going to do is I emailed them and uh, basically we're going to see if they're willing to make one. And hopefully they are because by God, I really don't want to buy another transmission or beg and plead for Gearstar to build me another one because uh, this one is brand new and we went and switched the engine up on them. Okay, so we're going to see what we can do there. Uh, and just so you know, the reason why this doesn't fit is, is A, none of the bolt holes line up, right? Uh, and B, I noticed something else here. Let's take a look. It seems that on this Chevy, there is this ring, this lip right here. So, bolt holes are different. And uh, we got flat versus lip. So, yeah, it don't really, don't really want to line up as you can see, but I mean, worst case scenario, we could always try to machine this and make it work, but that's going to require somebody smarter than me. So, uh, I guess till then we're calling it a night and we're calling this video well complete until we get to the next one. So hope you enjoyed. I guess we're going to move on to the K5 until we get the rest of the parts for this.